We need a picture here. Wait a second. <laughs> All right, so let's start uh, my presentation. Today I want to talk about uh, tips and tricks for developers, for uh, extension developers. Um, and I, want, I will get out of my comfort zone today because it's the first presentation that I do in English. So if I will be missing some words, so I have some German guys here, I can ask them. So okay, let's start. Um, uh, briefly, into the brief introduction. Um, uh, Victor Vogel is my name. Um, I'm the developer of the Kubik Ruby Joomla extensions. I started five, six years ago, and then it got m more and more popular and in big fun. And um, I also, after my studies in computer science, I, I got a permanent position at One and One uh, as the Joomla expert. And I'm also since this year I started. I, I'm in the production leadership team from, of Joomla in the official project, and also in some several other groups. Uh, like the bug squash session, uh, bug squash group, and um, the, I want to show you some some slides. It's I don't have a thread or how to say an agenda for it. I just uh, have some slides, and I want to give you some tricks, tips and tricks. Um, and this is my working pro process. So if you have another one, if you're a developer and you have another one, it's it's also okay. It's not written down. So but but this is what I learned over the past years, and what what I, what fits for me and what um, works for me. So first of all, um, learn the basics. It's important to learn the basics. So of course you have to know if you if you want to uh, develop extensions, you have to know which types which types we have in Joomla, and uh, also the structure, how they look like, um, what our components are, what they do, what, where we can use it, what plugins are, what how they are triggered. That's very important to know. Modules uh, and templates. I, I I am pretty sure you know already the types, so I don't have to explain them. Um, and also, what's what's important, and this is what you learn over the over the years, how the ex execution process of Joomla uh, is. So when 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 um, when uh, plugins are triggered, for example, what what are the steps that uh, are done when you call the index PHP? Where do when the libraries are loaded? This is something that's very important uh, to understand and also to use the, uh, for example, the, the flexibility of plugins. It's very important to understand when the plugins are triggered, so you 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 get the right point to to. To manipulate the data that you receive from your plugin, and of course, important is also to uh, to know uh, the basic uh, programming languages. So, of course, the meta uh, meta description language, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, and besides PHP. So, you will write, of course, uh, your your code, your your extension in PHP. But it's also important to know uh, the other stuff. So, um, the uh, next slide is uh, use the Joomla API. Don't do not reinvent the wheel. I see a lot of extensions they that do, for example, if you need a curl request, they just copy and paste the native curl uh, class uh, class or whatever or the curl functions and 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 use them. So we, we, you don't need it because we have we have a class for it. You, you, you can do, use for example JHTTP factory and you can do your request. And also we have a lot of in the library we have a lot of classes to interact with uh, with APIs like. Uh, GitHub, Twitter, Google, uh, so you don't have to put to uh, to to download or to imp implement the libraries of, of these uh, specific uh, specific uh, services in your own extensions. So try to understand and look look into the code, look into the library, what we already have, what functions we already have, and try to use them. Not try, but use them. Um, and also, um, if you want to man manipulate data uh, in the database directly. Uh, don't 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 do it directly. So if you if you for example for a good example is if you want to get articles and want to display the title of the articles in your in your component in your module whatever, uh, do not uh, do the request uh, directly on the database. Uh, go through the model of the of the specific components in this case com content, and uh, then um, you get sure that you all the filter all the user uh, user. Uh, uh, restrictions are set properly, and if you update the core, so you 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 will you will be sure that it still works if we, if we, if the user does the update with your extension, because maybe we change some uh, someday the database type or database structure, and you your extension will not work. So uh, try to avoid to manipulate the data uh, directly in the database, and also of course uh, look and uh, understand MVC model view controller. I I don't think I have to explain it here. You can just Google it if you want, if you don't know. And um, we have an API index where you can see all the all the fu functions, uh, all, all the classes that we have. You can just go to the website and just go through and, and look whether if you if you search for something. So the next point is uh, develop in, on a local environment. It's very important. Also for for me, it's very important. I always develop on a local environment, so you have an easy integration into your development. And, um, 
environment if you use an IDE. So you can you can um, set up uh, like you needed the local uh, the, the local environment. So set um, set the limits differently or install another PHP version. It's very easily done. And if you do some changes in your editor in your uh, IDE. Um, they are they are they are all immediately available, so you don't have to upload it to your server first. And of course, it's easily to to integrate a debugger locally, and also to access the classes in an IDE. So if you download the file and try to change something, you don't have the access to the to the core functions to the core classes. If you use an IDE and you implement you create an op project in PHP Storm or NetBeans, so then you have to access to the to the classes and you can just type and, and the auto completion will show you which classes are available and what you can use and if you have got access to them. So and just set it up on your on your on your machine, local machine, use one easy PHP, whatever what what fits in for your operation system. So the next point uh, the to use an IDE it's also very important. Uh, like PHP Storm, it's very powerful, very great. I love it. Um, I used uh, NetBeans PHP is also good. It's open source. It's free. Uh, and then I switched to PHP because it had more. It is flexible, more flexible, and uh, got more for me more 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 features that I need for my in my working process. So uh, the main advantage, of course, you you see errors uh, instantly. So. Um, um, if you write, uh, if you have a typo or something, you will just see uh, it's underlined red. So okay, you know there's a typo. If you just uh, you just use an editor, you you won't see it, and then you have to search, and it can take time. You have the auto completion. That's very cool. If you include the project, and you you can just use Jeff. If you start to type J, then then you will get a, a completion a suggestion J factory, for example, or J user J image. So it's very easy to go through all the classes that Joomla offers you. Um, it implements debugger, so you can debug. It's very important to understand and to learn and to get to a higher level in the development process. Um, you can use code sniffer. It's important if you do uh, contribution to the core. So to, to use code sniffer, to use the code styles that we have, the standards that we have in Joomla, and it's very easily to implement uh, in in a, in a IDE. And also, you you can also, for example, uh, run a system like Thing, like a build system, to create uh, packages, installation packages automatically. So you don't have to copy and paste all all things. And from so I switched to PHP Storm, and I would suggest. And the cool thing is, um, if you if you are a core contributor, you can get a free license. So this is a commercial uh, software, but you can get a free license if you contribute to the core regularly, and um, it's pretty cool. And it, it, it takes time, of course. It takes time to learn it. So I needed three three attempts, three, three tries to switch from NetBeans because I got so much used to it to switch to PHP Storm. But now after the switch and I learned and I had set up my configuration, what I needed, the settings, it was it's just great. It works really good. So next point is uh, user debugger. It's very important to use a debugger and understand uh, what a debugger is and how how to how to actually use the debugger. So it, it helps a lot to to find bugs, to to analyze your code, to um, just to to see what what the current state is in on in this specific line, to go through the lines line by line and to see what what variables are set, what are not set, which variables are available in this in this moment in the process. Um, so I use Xdebug. It's it's easily to implement also implement in the IDE like PHP Storm and it's pretty cool. So if you write something, do a breaking point, start the debugger. And then, and then just go through your code and, and look what what you have, and of course correct bugs or whatever fix bugs. So Xdebug, it's 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 a I would say it's a standard and it's always shipped with with a with a local environment software packages. Then the code styles um, and um, you can use I use Code Sniffer. This is a, a code style checker, and we also have uh, for Joomla, special for Joomla, we have uh, rules. That you can just implement, just download and activate, and then you will see all. And you can code like the standard, like, uh, according to the standard, for the Joomla standard. Um, and they are available on our document, documentation site. And the cool thing is PHP Storm is an auto format uh, functionality, so uh, you can select all the lines or just the file and uh, click auto format, and then it will, based to the according to the rules that you that you, that Joomla provides, it will uh, format the code properly. So if you do a pull request or you want to contribute, just do the auto format, and then the code style will be properly, properly done. So it also it was contributed by Bitcoin Brain, and you can download it, just implement and implement in, in your IDE and yeah. use it. It's very easy, very cool. 
I'm too fast, I think, huh? Okay. I'm almost done with the slides. <laughs> Just kidding. Because I, I, have, I have a reason why I'm, I'm a little bit faster. Because I want, uh, I think we have, we have some developers here and would like to hear how your working process is. So I would like to start a discussion afterwards, after I present my, my workflow. Uh, so using a build system is also very cool. You can do a lot of tasks. Uh, you can do you can let them do out, uh, you can do it them automatically with the, with the help of the build systems. I use for example Thing, and I use it for to create um, the installation packages. It's very cool. So in the past I use I had to copy and paste from the administrator. If I write a component, I have to copy all the files and language files. If I have media files from the media folder, it's and you can make uh, easily mistakes if you just uh, do it manually all the time. And if you do an update and you have to do the annoying task again. And if you use Fin, for example, it's very easy. You write once a, a build file and then you just click on it and it's, it creates all, it copies all in your, in the spe in the specified folder and creates an archive, uh, ready to go archive to inst for the installation. So it's very cool. It's also what you should look at and try to implement and I, I created a build file for each of my extension and just run the thing, uh, run the script and, and upload my files. Of course, you can do more with this. You can also uh, start the unit test processes on whatever or upload the files to VFTP. That's very powerful. So, but I used, I use it personally just for creating my installation packages. Uh, then, of course, uh, testing the extension is very important. Test your extension. The easiest, easiest way is, of course, to ask, uh, do it yourself. So, to, pro to co write code and to test it, of course. Of course. And, uh, of course, um, ask users, uh, users that we have, um, to ask them to test your extension before you release the final version. This is uh, very easily to do. And, um, of course, if you get more professional and more, and more advanced, uh, I would suggest you to use, uh, to use, uh, use PHP unit to write unit tests for your extensions. And also, if you have um, a lot of uh, complex output uh, in your components or whatever, uh, use automatic browser tests, Selenium with Selenium. So um, we will have, um, after uh, in the afternoon, we will have a Make It Happen session with Javier and Robert to how to, to use Selenium and do automated testing, automatic testing. If you're interested, just go in and take a look, and you can learn a lot, and we can help to 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 make some progress in the Joomla project, of course. So GitHub, Git, use Git, yeah, you should do it, yeah. Um, it's very great um, if you if you. It's not easy to get into it, but if you once understand how it works, and you you can do a lot of cool things, and it, it's it's great if you do if you work with other with other developers together. So it's really good. It's really easy. It's a great co collaboration platform. Uh, you can, you have a complete history that's also great. You can undo mistakes very easily. And, um, and also you can, you can create your own working flow, uh, with the help of Git. So you can, if you write a feature, you can, you can group all the feature, what you changed in one commit or, or in a commit, what your specific group. And, and you can, you can see exactly what you changed and what, what happened and what files were, were touched, so it's very cool, and um, and of course it's great to to learn it if you want to do core contributions uh, one day. So uh, because the Joomla code uh, itself is completely in GitHub, it's lying on GitHub. In GitHub. So uh, learn it, do it, and use it. So it's very good. You need it if you more advanced then. Uh, another point is very important for me to to write secure code. So you have a big res responsibility for your users, and um, do not uh, just if you if you need a special functionality or whatever, do not just use uh, copy paste and 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 trust the 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 people who wrote the code or whatever. Um, so be careful also with external libra libraries. Do you have if you if you include external libraries, you have to take care that they are always up to date. If you release a new, you have to. to to, to, to look whether, okay, you can use, uh, uh, compose or whatever for, for this, for the stuff. But, um, it's very important that you understand what you're doing. Not, not just copy and paste. And, um, the most hacks in, in recently were, were done, uh, were caused by third party extensions. So you have a big responsibility. So you have to understand it and, and also to deliver good quality code and, and secure code. That's important. So another point is also to stay professional. So of course you, if you, once you publish your, your, your things, your extensions, you will get a lot of requests. You will get a lot of criticisms. Um, so 
it's 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 good that you get feedback. It's very important. You have to listen to it and and listen to the needs of the users and uh, improve your improve your extension. So that's important. And um, if you have uh, maybe one or some of you uh, have um, extensions, the Joomla extensions direct, so you will automatically get some day uh, false or how do you say uh, not constructive or fraudulent uh, reviews or whatever criticisms that are not true. So you stay cool in this situation, calm down and try to solve the problems. So this is very important. Try to try to be professional, try to stay professional and don't bash or don't start a flame war or whatever in the internet. So, so show your professional side. And also don't talk bad about developers. So I heard that you know how it is. So yeah. <laughs> Very yeah, good. Uh, now, very important also in the Joomla proje project and open source and the community the thing, uh, share your knowledge. It's very important because you get so much from, from Joomla and from, from all the people from, from, from extensions. So give also something back. If you're good enough, so try to start to, to fix bugs, start to contribute to the core or go to events, uh, do presentations, share your knowledge with, uh, with, with beginners, do a workshop, something like this. It's very important for, that you don't ju just don't, not just uh, uh, take, uh, but also give. So it's very important for me too. And uh, also g get in contact with other developers. So share ideas, try to solve uh, things that, uh, together and work together ask ask for help it's not a, it's not a shame to ask for help so try to find somebody if you're if you're a beginner try to find a mentor that can help you to to get to 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 get better and to try to solve problems it's very important to also be in contact they are not your your enemy or however uh, how you, you want to say and then some more tips uh, tips i didn't do special uh, slides for them uh, refactor your code as often as possible. It's very important. Uh, you know how it is. If you look in the code in, in code that you wrote uh, one year ago, how the code is, you don't want to look into it. So refactor as much as possible. Improve it. Uh, get rid of things that you don't need in the code. Uh, get better. So in, in you will you will you will improve also your development skills steadily. So also it's you, you should also rewrite the code and to be up to date. So like what your skills are. Um, also use core features if you need, for example, a category system in your extension and your component. Use the com category what we provide already in the core, or the tag system or the SEL. Don't reinvent. Don't write a new function or not your, your own function for it. Use what we have already in the core. Uh, also maintain an update server. Um, uh, I did it. I also did an update service, but I did my own. That was not good. And now I learned that I should use the Joomla functionality. The problem was uh, I had the feature was really good implement, but the problem was the user could only see the new versions if there are new versions available if they go to my settings, to the settings of my extensions. So the problem was a uh, normal user would not go every day and look whether I have a new version. So they look on the left side, okay, are the new extension versions? So that's the problem. So use use the core functions for example, for, for the update. And it's really easy to write this file. It's an XML file with all the information. You just have to update the number and the and the URL to the zip file. It's very easy to do. And you can of, of course use a, for example, a Kiva release system, and um, it does the the, the the XML file automatically. So just just use it and update your your extensions, and you are done. Uh, now, a uh, very cool uh, thing, and I love it too. I love uh, the flexibility of trigger events, so for pl of plugins. And uh, I know who likes it too very much. So the guy in the back, Jisa. And if you want to learn more about plugins, I, I suggest his, to buy his book to look at his book. You have a you have a copy outside demo. Yeah, so you said already. Yeah. So take a look after after the, after the after the presentation if you want to learn because you can do so much things with 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 plugins. I love plugins. It's very flexible. You can you can just go into the process and you can manipulate a lot of things. And it's very powerful. It's, I, I, I love plugins. Plugins are really cool. And you can learn a lot with his books, with, with his, of Jesus' book. Yeah. So also write a good documentation. So if you don't write documentation, you will get a lot of email, a lot of requests, and a lot of annoying tasks that you will do again, again, again. So try to write a good documentation, and uh, you will see uh, the typical requests will stop. And uh, okay, not always. <laughs> the users uh, don't like to read uh, documentations, but 
um, you have to first to write good documentation uh, and, and then you can point them to the documentation. So, uh, for example, Akiva Nicolas uh, does uh, very good, does it very good. He has a very good documentation for all his extensions. So take a look and, and learn from that. And also what is important to analyze for, uh, code from different, from other extension developers and uh, try to understand what they were thinking, what they were, what they were planning, what, why, why they did this and this, and also to learn from it, of course, to see. And of course, it's important if you're starting to also look into the core, into the core extensions. This is also important to learn how, how we do it in the core. And then you can, of course, uh, adapt, adapt, uh, adopt it and try and also do it in your extension. So uh, I think it's the last slide for, for, for me. And now, and then we will talk about your, your tips and tricks. Uh, the last slide is optimized environment. So uh, of course, uh, if you start to develop locally, uh, this is what I always do. So I, I, my settings in Joomla is I use uh, always the latest release, of course. Uh, I don't install demo data. I check also, this is also good what a lot of developers for, forget. Uh, to check the Joomla debugger, so you can see what is what was written in the session, what uh, memory, what's the memory uh, usage, what database requests were made, were made. Do you do I have a bottleneck there? Bottleneck there, um, and also the profile information, what, which trigger were triggered, which which uh, functions were triggered, and when. Uh, also very 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 good good information to know, and also deactivate surf engine friendly URLs, so you get you see the parameters, so you can also manipulate the parameters and see how your component react. It's also important to see how the how the routing how the get parameters are resolved in your component and how you can use it and how you can redirect or whatever. It's also important. And in the development environment, of course, set the PHP error level to maximum so you can see whether you write bullshit or not. So increase the limits. I also increase the limits of memory or the time or the time. But of course, you have to test your extension then uh, with normal limits what the users uh, have in the, in the normal environment and in the server environment. Uh, I use the PHP debugger activated, so it's normally you do it in the PHP ini. If you use Xdebug, so just some lines you can copy and paste it. It's very easy. And also I use uh, also for for each project for each extension that I have, I have I have a own Joomla instance, a fresh clean one, and I install and tr develop there. And then I test it, of course, in other uh, environments that I have with other extensions and with my my extensions. And I think that's all for, from me. And I would like to to talk about about your working flow and your process. Of course, yeah. Let's start, my friend. Okay. Uh, I I think we pretty much uh, cover what you do. Yeah. But I think there's uh, a valuable uh, tip that I'd like to add, uh, um, and it also pertains to the structure that we use when we. Uh, Define a project. So uh, mm -hmm. I don't have a whiteboard, unfortunately, but just imagine your project at the top level. I have a www directory, yeah. which contains the entire site. On the same level, I have a DCS directory, mm -hmm. uh, which has uh, modules I'm working on, uh, the, <coughs> the CSS I'm working on. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Now, if you keep them totally separated and you start debugging or uh, modifying the style in your www directory because that's linked to the server, then your uh, files in your VCS, your Git stuff, don't, don't get updated yeah. because they're not linked to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, one trick that I always use is that I link those so symbolic links together. Yeah. So either with uh, symbolic links yeah. on Linux systems mm -hmm. or on Windows systems, you would use uh, also junctions uh, for the record. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can link them together. And to that end, I also use a pin script where right. I define which uh, directories correspond to each other. Yeah. So yeah. I can just run the script and that links them together. So then once I start debugging either the CSS of the, the other site or a specific module or component something, mm -hmm. I can just modify the context of the website and it will get replicated in the VCS structure, which is not necessarily the same directory. Yeah, I know. I understand. Yeah. So that makes it very easy to not lose your changes and still modify them in the context of your website. Yeah. Well, um, Good approach. I like it too. Yeah. So, so the solution is um, uh, Joomla tools. Uh, the, the guys behind the Kotlin, Yuku, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, they've also created the Vagrant uh, image for developing Joomla. So uh, Vagrant, you run it in a virtual 
machine. Uh, within the virtual machine, they've installed like all the different different tools. Uh, among these tools, there's also the Zoom uh, console, I think it's yeah. what being called. And that's actually also has a command to link uh, uh, from an extension to a uh, Zoom site. And then make all the symbolic, symbolic links so the extension can keep uh, its own directory structure with, um, well, based on GitHub, for instance. So that's, that's like a simple. It's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Very advanced. Well, I have tried to use Bing mm -hmm. in my Bing development, but I find it a bit, a bit learning curve, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I usually use uh, Bash. Mm -hmm. I have a script in Bash. Okay. So I, can do. I know it's not, uh, it works for simple setups. Yeah. Uh, it depends a little bit on, um, on how many extensions or how much code you want to uh, distribute. Yeah. So, so work, on the, no. work on your development department because Bash is not cross platform. Yes. And uh, Thing is cross platform. Yes, that, that's a main advantage. Yeah, you're working on Linux boxes, on Windows boxes, and uh, if you do a Bash script, then it just doesn't work or you have to go through extra hoops uh, to yeah. make it. Oh, wow. Well, I need um, Linux guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, for each own solution. Yes, yes. Chinese solution is to order a bash. Yeah. If you want to know bash, it's better to start with it. Yes, and as far as. It gives you the flexibility of, for instance, if you have an extension that has a free side and a pro side. Yeah. That, that's great. That's great for it, yeah. And as far as I know, we have uh, examples on, on the documentation side. So, just look for them and you can adapt them. Yes. Yeah. Like imagine, then doing that all with SSH becomes a help. And then Capistrano allows you to define tasks um, and th define those tasks locally, and then Capistrano allows you to automatically copy all those tasks to those remote servers. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. downside is actually that uh, Capistrano is Ruby based, so you have to learn a new language. Uh, so I no. decided to use no. <laughs> <laughs> and Fabric is okay. all Python based, so you <laughs> okay. When I say use SSH, I mean use SSH from within Fake. Yes, but that, that's what I started with. But then, if, the, if, the, if you want to have a lot of commands, basically you're using like uh, dozens of lines of SSH. Uh, and then it becomes smarter to use different systems. I don't know that. Another big advantage of using Fake is that you can write your own extensions to Fake to do stuff. And yeah. Playing PHP. Yes. It's very easy to mm -hmm. you know, write an extension and let you have a new part. Mm -hmm. So, and, yeah, a lot of things that's really important. Powerful, yeah. I, I just wanted to say that obviously, when you have an Azure extension, the next step is to uh, get a system of extension strategy. Um, this has been so really good. Good. No. <laughs> 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 Mm -hmm. um, the types of things we look for are checking if the extension together is from the directory, if you're there to answer any questions you have, and we'll be up with an extension if you like. 
Yeah, because actually, um, I, I would also be very interested in uh, kind of REST API or JSON yeah. API. Yeah, yeah. All the extensions of it, that I don't have anywhere else. That's great. Would be would be great. Yeah. Yes. I also want to do some comment on something. I I, I have not tried not tested it, but I saw the way the way uh, Spy is kind of out in London, and it's cool. It has cool. Good. Cool. 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 That allows uh, easy uh, to to automatically uh, show your changes in the code in the browser. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. Nils, you wanted to say something? You want to say something? No? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. I was more and more big suggestion for the discussion. Yes. The small one is uh, this tool called PHP CS Fixer, mm -hmm. which is from the Simply Guys, which is uh, something that automatically uh, checks your code uh, and you can do code if you want. And uh, it can just show you what you have to fix or just when fix it. So mm. it's when you have a large amount of code that you need to work out, maybe an extension can do the work. And uh, one thing you can do with it is just add it as a git hook. So whenever you come in, you are not allowed to put it unless it's a uh, it's a uh, PHP CS fixer. CS fixer. CS is standard for code. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I haven't heard somewhere, but there was also a question I had that the, the current PHP code sniffer that is supported by Juma is version 1, and there's now version 2, and actually version 2 is automatically included in this, in this fixing. Uh, I think but that you can specify the rules against which you can compare. Yeah, of course, not by default, it just picks up the SLR, so, <laughs> so that's uh, the default usage, but I think you can. So just a tool to, to, to compare your code automatically. Yeah, that's, so the, the, the rules they, they change themselves. So the, there's a there's the code sniffer one format, and there's the code sniffer two format. Yeah. So, so I, I don't know exactly how it works, but I thought it was like the implementation stuff like that. I think that uh, I can't say it for no. sure, but I think that if you define uh, standard the rules against which you you compare, it's not like this. I don't think there's a completely different standard for this tool. Oh, you mean for, for PHP CS fixer? Yeah. Okay, then. And the big. No, oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> the, the, second, <laughs> the second suggestion is a bit more, you know, uh, open for discussions here. An attitude. I, I find myself uh, learning a lot by starting to use other frameworks as well mm -hmm. and trying to, to compare what, what's, what, what, I, what they are doing. And sometimes uh, I got back my Joomla extension, my Joomla work, uh, doing things better. Yeah, because yeah. I now understand some more of, for example, how the MVC is supposed to go, uh, what's exactly the JP more, more in the yeah, company. Right, right. And so, uh, whatever you can, maybe if there's, I don't know, a conference or something like uh, a day of uh, any other um, uh, framework or CMS near you, maybe you, you do. You get should have time. So you can learn a lot and bring back this uh, excellent experience in particular journal. Yes. Yeah. The rest of the PHP world is doing this. So we, we should all we should all yeah, good point. Yeah, good good point. Yeah. To name it directly, it's uh, uh, if you want to look at other codes, don't look at Drupal, don't look at WordPress, but do look at Laravel. La so yeah, yeah Symfony or some other Wembrook yeah. yeah, I didn't know Right. <laughs> 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 Good point, good point. Marco? Yeah, that's the spectrum. Actually, uh, if you want to enforce it, you can use it as a GitHub uh, hook. Mm -hmm. uh, PHP Storm by itself yeah. already supports that, so you have the code sniffer installed, mm -hmm. and you can uh, have a tick box when you can commit that it actually won't let you commit uh, explicitly. Uh, when there are codes that are errors or warnings. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's good. There was another remark that just came to mind when you said, well, I just fixed something a php.ini file. Uh, mm. Unfortunately, there's multiple ways that you can run your PHP on your web server and uh, 
with the via model Apache or via uh, FCGI. Yeah. Uh, so the PHP the linear uh, method doesn't always work. So you have to be aware of that. Yeah, yeah of course. That's so your, yeah. Right. So people hitting their heads against the wall. I know, I know. Me too. <laughs> Mm -hmm. No, no, no. no. I, I used to use it since years, for years. No, no, no. So I like it. But it's okay. it's okay. I also use it for years and I'm here. I'm staying here in front of you, so. <laughs> Somebody else? Um, yeah, I, I want to uh, show off also a little bit. <laughs> um, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, a couple of months ago, uh, or actually like half a year ago, uh, Zen um, released a new version of my Zen server. And Zen server is like a <laughs> Good trick. That's great. That's great. Interesting. Again, Marco. <laughs> we know. We know. <laughs> This is good, yeah. yeah. A good possibility if you don't own it yourself. Mm -hmm. It's nice. So, uh, one more point. Uh, we have in the afternoon we have the make it session happen. If you have questions or want to develop something, I'm here all the time. So just or maybe one. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> play guitar or just fix some bugs, do some core controls, learn how to use GitHub. I'm all the time here, so I will be will be will be around. Just come to me, and we can I can show you something if you want. 
So thank you very much. Thank you very much. I did it. Trust me. <laughs> Thank you. Is it off?